TensorPro is reactive to light in the 430 nanometer to UV spectrum. This means that deep blue or indigo and purple LEDs can be used to make a TensorPro exposure unit. So I purchased a purple LED light strip from Amazon to try out. Unfortunately, I didn't check the wavelength. Turns out they are blue LEDs combined with red phosphorus, a combination that tricks the eye into thinking it's purple. Very different from the actual wavelength of purple. I'll give them a try anyways. Who knows, maybe the blue light will work. Of course the red light is a total waste of energy and won't do anything for Stencil Pro. If blue LEDs work though, they'll be a great alternative for people nervous or sensitive about using black light or UV. Cut LED strips into 12 inch sections. Be sure to cut only where marked. I used LED strip light connectors to daisy chain each individual section. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough, so soldered the last few strips using 22 gauge stranded wire. The power adapter came with this convenient wire connector. Time to connect it up and turn it on. Nice! Now to connect the wires on the other end. Should help carry the current. Wait, what? Why is it shutting off? Makes no sense. Hmm. Let me check the voltage. Less than 12 volts and the voltage drop on the other end is much greater than I was expecting. Almost 3 volts. Let's give my benchmark power supply a try. It's drawing over 2 amps. That's more than 1.6 amp rating specified on Amazon. And when I connect the other end, over 3 amps. Way too much for the 2 amp power adapter I got. It's probably shutting off due to overload. We're going to need a bigger power supply. But look how much brighter it gets when I connect both ends. Lucky I got lazy and decided to daisy chain the sections together instead of parallel connecting them. On the other hand, the problem is the sections towards the end of the chain will be dimmer than the sections closest to the power. Not a problem for mood lighting, but a disaster for an exposure unit. I'll have to rethink daisy chain wiring in my next version. I mounted the sections in an old baking sheet, 11 by 17 inches and 1 inch high. Very simple and inexpensive. The adhesive backing was a bear to remove. Didn't stick very well either. Next time I'll use a mechanical solution. Notice how I staggered each strip of LEDs. This will help even out the light. Here's a neat trick. Place a sheet of white computer paper on top of a sheet of clear acrylic. Move the sheet up and down over your light panel until the light looks evenly distributed. Too far up and it's too diffused. Too close and you start forming hot spots. You can clearly make out the individual LEDs when the paper is pressed against the panel. Not good. It creates hot spots that will overexpose Stencil Pro. Moving the paper just a fraction of an inch makes a big difference. The light is much more evenly distributed over the surface. Of course, you have overlap, but that should be okay. Now let's give it a try. I'll start with 10 minutes to see if it works at all. I think any longer will make it impractical. Hey, it works. Now let's try five minutes. Hmm, it worked, but the stencil is a bit soft and sticky. I'm pleasantly surprised though. The quality, intensity, and actual color of LED strips from Amazon can vary greatly, 
So be sure to test exposure times with small test pieces before committing a full sheet of Stencil Pro. In an upcoming video, I'll make a unit using actual black light LEDs for comparison. So be sure to check back regularly.